The newly elected president of Senegal, President Diome Fay, has stated his commitment to reinstating Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger into the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS. During his speech which he delivered in French, President Fay emphasized his unwavering determination to pursue this objective, confirming his determination to take whatever measures are regarding to accomplish this. He said, I am ready to maintain relations with our brother countries of the Sahel and to work for their returns into ECOWAS family. It's over now, said Captain Ibrahim Traore, first of all you say what the texts say, but they have never respected their own words. It's done on the client's behalf. That's what we have noticed. The sanctions imposed on Nigeria don't exist anywhere in the texts. So the first to violate these texts are these so-called Democrats. We leave, but we don't stay in Africa. Anyone in Africa, an African who wants to come to Burkina, is very welcome home. Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso are presently not interested in rejoining ECOWAS. It's important to recognize the severity of the sanctions imposed on Niger on July 20, 2023, following a coup that occurred on July 26, 2023. These measures were taken in order to reinstate President Mahamat Bazoum and were termed as illegitimate, illegal, inhuman, and irresponsible by General Tkiani. The sanctions included the closure of land and air borders between ECOWAS countries and Niger. The establishment of an ECOWAS no-fly zone for all commercial flights to and from Niger, the suspension of all commercial and financial transactions between ECOWAS member states and Niger, freezing of all service transactions, including utilities. Freezing of assets of the Republic of Niger in ECOWAS central banks, freezing of assets of the state OF Niger, state enterprises, parastatals, and commercial banks. Suspension of Niger from all commercial aid and transactions with financial institutions, particularly the BDID and the WADB. Additionally, there was a travel ban as well as an asset freeze for military officials involved in the coup attempt. Their family members and civilians collaborating with any institution or government established by these military officials. These ECOWAS sanctions seem to aim at crippling the economy, talk more of provoking the people of Niger to oppose the new military rulers. One of the greatest consequences of these sanctions was the prohibition of the Niger state from importing food and medicine, leading to disastrous and tragic outcomes as many Nigerians were deprived of viral necessities, crucial for survival. This import ban created a desperate situation, where people were deprived of adequate sustainability as well as medical treatment, resulting in the loss of lives due to harsh and inhumane measures. It is a heartbreaking strategy that innocent Nigerians had to endure such suffering as a result of political conflicts and power dynamics beyond their control. I vividly recall the former Prime Minister of Niger, confidently asserting on French media that Niger would collapse under the pressure of sanctions without international aid. Yet about seven months have passed since then, and Niger still stands resilient and even stronger than before. What happened to his prediction, where is he now? Niger has demonstrated remarkable resilience, to the extent that it is currently supplying AES with affordable fuel. It is worth noting that Burkina Faso also possesses untapped oil resources, while Mali has oil reserves that Algeria with France as an ally has been exploiting since the 1960s. ECOWAS has lifted all the sanctions imposed on Niger Mali and Burkina Faso. However it is important to understand that this decision was not driven by a resolution of the crisis, but rather by the serious economic repercussions these sanctions had on the member states' economies. Initially, the sanctions aimed to pressure the government to address the political crisis in Mali, but unintended consequences were significant. With Niger closing its air space to ECOWAS, Benin's port remained idle and Côte d'Ivoire faced the risk of its agricultural products depreciating due to lack of buyers. ECOWAS had no choice but to lift the sanctions to the adverse effects of their decision, as it was the only way to eliminate economic harm inflicted on the member states. Now, turning back to Senegal, I wonder if Diome Faye still holds the belief that Burkina, Mali, and Niger will eventually return to ECOWAS despite the recent sanctions. 
Interestingly, these three nations have come up with a new organization that operates similar to ECOWAS. However, it's premature to draw definitive conclusions at this stage. Staying optimistic that Senegal's new president will operate in positive changes for his people is the best thing to do. Diome Fay's campaign promises are very impressive encompassing a good number of pledges. A commitment to advance pan-Africanism and national sovereignty, ensuring a more equitable distribution of wealth. Overholding the corrupt justice system, revisiting and renegotiating mining, gas, oil and fishing contracts with foreign entities, particularly as Senegal prepares to commence hydrocarbon production this year. Introducing a new national currency and discarding off the CFA franc, diminishing the president's authority, strengthening ties between Senegal and Russia. There has been circulating footage online featuring Diome Fay's mentor and close associate, Sanko Ausman, delivering a passionate discourse directed towards France. It is high time for France to lift its knee off our neck and put an end to this unjust oppression. Centuries of misery, human trafficking, colonization, and neocolonization have caused immeasurable suffering. It's time to put an end to this cycle of oppression. It's high time for France to leave us alone. It's time for France to take a cue from its European neighbors and learn a valuable lesson in independence. France's hypocrisy is evident and pervasive in daily life. Personally, we expect absolutely nothing from France. We desire her to cease meddling in our matters so that the people of Senegal can exercise their freedom of choice rather than being influenced by France's selection of a candidate using the tactics we are aware of. We strongly urge France to listen to the voices that speak to it about our plan for a more collaborative, fairer, and sustainable partnership between Africa and France. It is crucial that we work together towards a future that is equitable, just, and environmentally conscious. If she listens, I believe we'll have beautiful days ahead in our collaboration together. If he doesn't know how to cut it, thinking he can continue to function like in the time of our grandfathers, this African youth no longer accepts it. France must make preparations for a definitive break and completely withdraw from Africa. Africa belongs to Africans, not France. She belongs to no one else, neither China, nor the United States, nor anyone else. His words serve as a powerful reminder of the ongoing struggle for independence and self-determination in African nations. France and other former colonial powers must step back and allow African nations to navigate their paths forward. African youths, intellectuals, and the diaspora must unite and resist continued exploitation. France's persistent exploitation of African nations is glaring and deeply entrenched in daily life and these double standard must stop. French leaders are to acknowledge the imperative to withdraw control over their former colonies. Respecting independence and self-determination as fundamental rights. What are your thoughts on this? Share with us in the comment section below. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and if you enjoyed this video please like, share and turn on the notification bell to see more videos like this.